Hi everyone, my name is Amber and today I'm going to be showing you how to use NetGalley. I'm planning on doing a series of videos on NetGalley and also Edelweiss, also known as EW, which are both websites that book bloggers and booksellers can use to request digital e-arcs or advanced readers copies of books that are coming out in the future. I've been around here for a while, I've been using NetGalley since 2010 and Edelweiss since whenever it started up. So I feel like I've got some knowledge that I can pass on to new book bloggers or book bloggers who just now want to get around to requesting arcs online. So please do subscribe if this video helps you and you want to see more videos like this from me. It would mean a lot to me and it will be really good to know that people are finding this video useful. So let's get on with the video. So let's start with the basics. To get onto NetGalley, you will need to register an account and then go on to set up a profile. For this account, you need a username. I would recommend using the same username you use for everything else, although it doesn't have to be the same, mine isn't, but it just helps publishers know where to find you and connect your accounts with one another. So when you're setting up you the account you need to say what kind of reviewer you are. I've put that I am a blogger and I review books on my own blog. You'll need to put in an address I think or at least you did when I first started. I don't know if that's still a requirement but it was when I first started and my address is on there. It's not visible for the public though. And then you also have a bio. I'm going to go into this more in my NetGalley tips and tricks video that I'm going to be doing but basically for the bio you want to put a very short introduction, who you are, where you're from, what your interests are. So I've put what my favourite genres are including post-apocalyptic fiction, urban fantasy, thrillers and then I basically copied my review policy from my blog which says what kind of books I want to review, where I review them including Goodreads and Amazon and then also information on my book blog and my YouTube channel. So I included a couple of statistics on there including how many views I get per month on my blog, how many views my review videos on YouTube get, how many followers I've got on those sites because the publishers want to know what they're getting themselves into if they approve you for a book they want to know how big your reach is you can also connect your social accounts i would highly recommend doing this you can link your twitter your linkedin i think and your goodreads i've linked both of those i've also included the links to my blog my instagram and my youtube channel so once you're all set up and you've uploaded your profile picture which i don't think is that important but I uploaded mine you're ready to start requesting books and i will say again in my NetGalley tips and tricks video but I will say it here do not go and request every single book that you can find on NetGalley because you'll be approved for more books than you expect. I remember when I first started I went through the young adult category and I requested absolutely everything I could and I was approved for a lot and I'm still not caught up on my net galley ratio which is something I'll talk about in a bit. So you can find galleys in various different ways, you can go to the categories tab and here you'll find various options, you can click the read now option which is really good for people who want to build up their net galley ratio, I personally don't do this but if you want free books and you want to get on publishers radars and prove that you can be trusted to review the books that you request and you can go to the read now tab and you can download some books. If you have one you'll also need to connect your Kindle address to NetGalley so that the books can be sent straight from NetGalley to your Kindle but you can also download them to your computer using Adobe. Some people are lucky enough to be auto approved by some publishers, I think I'm auto approved by four or five which means that I can just click read now on any of their books which is really exciting because I do have a few favourite publishers. You can also sort by recently added or most requested which which is good for looking at popular books but then you also have genre categories. You can set these categories as your favourites so you can add them as your preferred genres which means that they'll show up on your home page. So I'm going to go ahead and click on teens and YA and then there you can see all the books that are available for requests. Do note that I am using the .co.uk NetGalley site but you can also use netgalley.com which shows different books. The .co.uk site is basically for people in the UK but if you're not from the UK you can still use .co.uk or if you're from the UK or outside of the US you can still use netgalley.com. It's just a lot of books on netgalley.com will be wish for it books which basically means you click request and a publisher will sometimes grant your wish. It's basically the same thing as requesting a book. So then to request a book that you might be interested in all you have to do is click request and then you say why you're interested in the book. I think this just gives the publisher feedback on why most people are excited for it. For example if it's a popular author the publisher will want to know if you're excited for it because of the author or because of the description. There's also feedback back for the cover and then also if you click people won't stop talking about this book it shows that it's being promoted within the community. So now say you've been approved for a book you can get emails to say whether or not you are approved I'd recommend doing that because there have been times that I haven't had an email and then I've missed the fact that I've been approved for the book and then it's archived which means you can't download it after a certain date 
and I've missed out on the book. So you need to click on your shelf and then you need to download the book either to your Kindle or to your computer. You can also search for titles which I find really useful. I'm waiting for the new Jane Harper book to go up on NetGalley so I've been searching for that almost every single day. So now onto your shelf, this is where you'll find the books that you have interacted with in some way. So you can find the books that you still need to give feedback for, you can see the books that you have sent feedback for and you can see the books that are not active. So these are ones that have been archived, the requests that are still pending so that you're waiting for publishers to approve or decline you for and you can also see declined requests. I don't really like looking at that tab because it's quite sad but if you click on your current shelf you can find the books that you still need to give feedback for. As you can see I've got six books that are current. These are the ones that are not out yet or they're ones that I requested in the last three months that I still need to review. I've already read a couple of these so I just need to give feedback on them so let's click on give feedback for one by one which is one that I've already read and that will take you to the review page. If you don't want to review the book because you don't finish it or you're no longer interested in it you can click I will not be giving feedback on this title however I wouldn't recommend doing that again I will talk about this in my tips and tricks video but I would recommend writing a reason in the review box saying why you're not interested in this book anymore. So you write out your review, it has to be more than 100 words I believe. You give it a rating, you have to give it a rating in order to review it and then you can add links as well. You can share this on social media and then you can click send review and that will then take you to a page which asks you a couple of questions such as would you buy this book for a friend or family member, are you interested in reaching out to the author and that kind of thing. So that just gives a bit more feedback to the publishers rather than just having them read through your review. As far as I'm aware there is not a way to cancel a request once you have sent it in to the publisher. Correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think there is. That is something that I wish NetGalley would include because sometimes I request a book on Edelweiss and I get approved on there and then it's still pending for me on NetGalley. Or sometimes, like in the case of the other people, a book stays on there for months and months. I requested the other people back when it was first put up on NetGalley and the book's already come out and my request is still pending so I wish there was a way to cancel that just so it didn't show up on my tab anymore. You can also browse specifically by publisher if you want to. I find this quite useful for going through various publishers that I know that I like and then you can view their whole catalogue. I do really enjoy doing this from time to time although it's not really a feature I use very often. On the publishers page as well you can sometimes view their approval preferences although not all of them have uploaded any. You can find out what it is they're looking for when they're approving a book. So those are the basics of using NetGalley. Hopefully this video was somewhat useful for you. Let me know if you've got any other questions in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. Again, I'm not an expert on NetGalley but I have been using it for years and I feel like I've kind of got it down. I'll be posting a tips and tricks video in a couple of weeks so do subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll speak to you all in my next video. Bye!